All right. Hello, everybody. Happy birthday to me. At least it will be my birthday when this video comes out. So, um, wow. Thank you guys for all the questions. Like, I legit did not think I would get so many. I thought that I was going to have to, like, come up with questions for myself. <laughs> I didn't think so many people would actually, like, jump in and, and ask me questions. So that's awesome. Uh, and we got a lot of them. Yeah, so I'm just going to get straight into them. We're going to start with uh, Stuart M., uh, who asks how old I am. I'm 34 right now. I was born in 1987, so May 13th, I'll be 35. Heading on the downslope, from what I hear, but, you know, I'm I'm still doing okay for being 35, you know. Um, no big deal, you know. My life might be, like, half over or something. Uh... existential dread sorry <laughs> anyway yeah i'm gonna be 35 and then they ask what was your first rpg first system or first game that really got you into gaming okay so i've got a cheat sheet here just so i don't forget but um do 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 our first gaming system was the nes but uh, I was really little when I played NES, and I liked video games, but like it, I didn't get serious into gaming because of the NES. Um, it wasn't until we got the Super Nintendo for Christmas, and it was over. Like it was for me and my sisters. My sisters played it a little bit, but I I got to play it, and then it like it was like oh, 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 oh. it was like brought down from the heavens just for me. Um, so yeah, I guess you could technically say like the first game that got me into gaming was uh, Super Mario World because that's what the Super Nintendo came f with. But uh, if you want to be real, the game that like got me into playing video games was A Link to the Past. I mean, Zelda was too cool, man. And that was the first game that I actually beat on my own. Like I beat that game. That was the first video game I ever beat all the way through was Zelda A Link to the Past. So there you go on that one. Um, what was the other questions? They were pretty interesting. Oh yeah, what game were you expecting based on word of mouth trailers or critical feedback to love and then ended up being disappointed by? And then conversely, which games were you unexpectedly, positively surprised by liking? Okay, this one is, uh, is pretty interesting. Games I went into and I was dissatisfied with, thinking that they were going to be awesome. Um, No Man's Sky. When that game was announced and all the cool stuff that it talked about, like how the universe was huge and, you know, you'd find all kinds of, like, unique, everything was unique, there was no repeats of stuff, blah, blah, blah. I was super excited with that game, and I spent the money on it, and I think I got, like, five hours in of that game, and holy shit, it just became boring as hell. Just... There was so much, like, I don't know, there there were just so many things that, that you would see again, or, like, there wasn't all that much interesting going on in a lot of planets uh, on first release. Now, I mean, I haven't played it, two years ago is when I got back into it, after they did all the updates and stuff, and basically gave us the game we were promised, and it was fun. I played it for a long, long time. I built a lot of really cool bases and found a lot of cool planets, but... Um, what had happened there was they just added hours and then after that you know once you got busted and you got all the stuff it was it became boring again i mean like the the coolest planets were the anomalous ones uh the ones that didn't you know make sense like the glass planet and uh you know the bone marrow planet and so those are cool those were really cool but i mean once you've seen all of them you've seen all of them there's not a whole lot left I'm not going to get super into this because this was maybe one of the first video game reviews that I ever thought about doing was uh, Journey on the PS3, I think it was. Um, that, I just, it was not advertised to me correctly, right? It was an experience. It wasn't meant to be a video game, right? It was basically supposed to show off the PS3s, or maybe it was the PS4. I forget which one it was trying to, like, show off the, the visuals and power, but it was literally just float from one end of the map to the other and hit a button. You know, that was the gameplay. And I got so bored with it that I'm like, dude, this isn't even a game. I'm not fighting anything. I'm not finding anything. I'm literally just looking at a sandscape and hitting buttons and then I'm like okay fine well I was on the the uh, level with quicksand and I'm like I've been jumping around trying not to fall in it and I'm like you know what dude I'm done with this game I'm just gonna 
you know, I'm going to see what it looks like to die at least. And I jump in the quicksand and I expect to die and your character just floats over the quicksand. It's like, why did you even put quicksand? Why even like imply that it's dangerous if you can't die from it? Like I, I was, I was mad. I was very mad at that game and a lot of people were mad at me for not liking it. And it's like, they're like, it was supposed to be an experience, not, you know, this, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, yeah, but it wasn't advertised like that. It was, I was told it was a video game, you know. Anyway, that's a whole different rant for another time. Uh, so is this one. Um, hot take. I'm not a fan of Breath of the Wild. I, I barely played it. I did maybe six hours of that game, and... It just wasn't my cup of tea. Now, I'm not like a Zelda purist where I'm like, they have to go with the same formula all the time because I'm a fan of Zelda 2, which is another hot take. But, no, uh, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of Breath of the Wild. Uh, and, again, that's that's a discussion for another time. But suffice, suffice it to say, the weapon breaking, the stamina, stuff like that, just it didn't appeal to me very much. Um, and then games that I unexpectedly loved right that I didn't think I would so I never was really a fan of the GTA games like you know Grand Theft Auto and all that I knew that people loved them and stuff but I just wasn't really into them and then uh you know uh, Red Dead Redemption came out the first one and uh I thought okay cool this is a Wild West thing could be pretty cool I was so totally expecting not to like the gameplay because it was like GTA but with horses and wagons and shit and I'm like, all right, well, I tried it, and I love the story so much and the gameplay so much that Red Dead became one of my favorite video games on the PS3, for sure, still is. Um, and Red Dead Redemption 2 just was mountains better, it just built upon how good that, that game was. So, yeah, the Red Dead series, I didn't expect to like it, and it's like one of my favorite series now. And then they asked what team I play for, so I respect everybody's preferences, live your life how you like, I'm straight. But you're right, I am cute as fuck. I take any compliment I can get. The next question is from Lunatarium, and this is a really good question. Actually, I was hoping for this one. Um, so they say, what are your favorite bands? Maybe a top ten if you feel like it, or just a strong sampling of your favorites, albums included. I'm not going to include albums because this video is going to be long enough already, and if we get into music, uh, it's going to be hours long. So I'm just going to without context just kind of tell you the top 10 that i came up with off the top of my head and uh yeah you can just go from there obviously number one is pink floyd that is my favorite band of all time it will never change um but after that uh the sword metallica audio slave alice in chains bad company the beatles fleetwood mac foreigner and the offspring that's the list i would give you i love all those bands uh they're all attached to very significant moments in my life, especially Pink Floyd. Um, but yeah, a lot of metal, a lot of classic rock. Um, that doesn't even kind of touch the surface of the music that I do listen to. That's just a, a consolidated list of like a top 10, right? Uh, and they're interchangeable uh, throughout, except for Floyd. Floyd always stays at the top. Okay, uh, yes, I, I am a weeb, so... Are you a fan of anime? If so, which are your favorites from Black Omen? Awesome name, by the way. Um, so, I have a list of that as well. So, um, my favorite anime, actually, uh, it didn't become my favorite anime until I first saw it a few years ago. I never watched it, you know, I, I'd never even heard of it until a few years ago. And then I watched the whole series and I'm like, dude, this is awesome like the themes the storytelling the characters and stuff um space pirate captain harlock is my favorite anime um it usurped my previous favorite anime which was outlaw star outlaw star is now second place uh right after that is cowboy bebop and then another one that you know that this is just uh, you gotta love your your fun anime that like is self-aware right so cromartie high school if anyone has ever seen that I freaking love that show. That was so good. Freddie Mercury is literally a character in it. Come on, dude. <laughs> Honorable mention, really, because this isn't really an anime, but if it was an anime, it's an anime style. If it was an anime, it would probably be my favorite anime. Um, Tsukihime, or Melty Blood, basically. The characters from 
Melty Blood and the storylines and the you know the graphic novel and stuff. Um, I freaking love those characters. So Tsukihime, if it was an anime, it would be up there for me, but it's not. It is a graphic novel and a fighting game. Vampire Hunter D. I never did watch that series, but when I was a kid, I had on VHS Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust the movie, and that movie is bad as hell, dude. Like, I was I was all in on that shit. Uh, the Marcus Brothers, uh, you know, D himself was cool as shit. Just everything about that movie was was hype and cool and dark and just, who who it was really neat. Um, another series, Trigun. I love Trigun. I ordered that on DVD a long time ago uh, before um, Toonami started playing. The Toonami Midnight Run used to play it. Uh, or started playing it after a while, and I'd already seen the whole series, so I wasn't like, I was like, okay, cool, it's on Toonami, but I have the whole DVD set, so I don't care. (laughs) And Helsing. When I first saw Helsing, that was cool. The The funny part is, before I saw Vampire Hunter D or Helsing, the thing that, like, kind of made me get into, like, the, the vampire anime stuff was we, me and my friends watched Blood the Last Vampire, the movie, right? I guess it was the movie. Um, and that was, like, the first time I'd ever seen an anime that was really, like, bloody and dark and horror, and I'm like, ooh, this is sweet. That's my basic list right there. There's more animes that I watch, uh, more that I plan to watch, too, but, yeah, if I had to say Space Pirate Captain Harlock is my favorite, and then Outlaw Store, then Cowboy Bebop, there's a top three for you. Okay, Brandon B. asked me, outside of the legend of Square's RPGs in the 90s, what classic games have you not played that you love? So I can't think of one that uh, I've not played that I love, but I can think of one that I didn't play when I was a kid and only played like a few years ago, and I have a huge appreciation for it now, and I really love it. Um, Gargoyles Quest Two on regular Nintendo. It's a platformer. It stars Firebrand uh, from the Super Goals or the... Uh, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, Super Goals and Ghosts series. And, uh, yeah, I, I played it a few years ago. My buddy Jared said, you never played this? We should play it on NES. And I played it, and I'm like, dude, this is so cool. Like, it had the overworld map thing, and you went into to area. It was kind of like, a, it reminded me of Joe and Mac a lot, but way cooler because you're a freaking fire demon, you know? Um, and the platforming was interesting, the wall clinging mechanics, stuff like that. It had, like, every element of game, other games that I liked. You know, like um, Strider and Ninja Gaiden, stuff like that. It it was just neat. It was a a cool platformer, and it it really was a unique thing. And so much so that Jared actually bought me a copy of it for Nintendo. So that was really cool of him. Um, So yeah, that's the one I would say, Gargoyles Quest 2. Okay, so another quick one from Black Omen. What was the first video game soundtrack that resonated with you and stuck with you ever since? Okay, this is, uh, this is a, a it's going to be a weird one. Uh, I'd probably have to say Final Fantasy IV if I really, like, you know, if I'm really being honest, because I really like the boss battle theme from that game, and just the opening theme, and every, every, every theme in that game is pretty cool. But, the first one that really got me and resonated with me, and still does to this day, and don't make fun of me, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Dude, you cannot tell me that Doom Castle is not the coolest freaking track ever. That, even Focus Tower, you know, even, like, the Level Forest music, regardless of what you think, the Lava Dome music, regardless of what you think of the gameplay, the music, the soundtrack from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is ridiculous, dude, and and it's, it's so overlooked. I love the soundtrack from that game and I still hear it in my head all the time. So that was definitely the one that, that first got me to like appreciate a soundtrack in a video game. And I do remember that was like the, one of the first games that I ever like stood in place just to listen to the music, right? So yeah, there's a good one there. Benjamin Rush says, I'm really curious to know what is your favorite horrible video game to play? Maybe it's a crappy childhood game you return to every once in a while. Well, I just talked about Mystic Quest. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a horrible game, but uh, it's not great, and I do go back to it, and it is a cult classic to me. I love it. Um, but I have a few of them that 
you know, subjectively, I would consider horrible games. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there who would think differently, but to me, these are some of the ones that that are just horrible. But I will go back and play sometimes. Um, Capcom Fighting Evolution or Capcom Fighting Jam, whatever you want to call it. Um, that game is a hot mess <laughs> of a fighting game, but it's cool because it's got like Red Earth characters in it. It's got Dark Stalkers in it, Alpha Alpha characters, you know, Third Strike characters, all these characters in. One fighting game is a super big crossover game, but yeah, <laughs> they didn't really pay attention to how the mechanics were going to work intertwined from all of those games, and uh, yeah, it's just a, a, a bloody mess of horrible frame data stuff and just glitching, and it, 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 there are, are anomalies in that game that cannot be explained by mortal men, and yeah, Capcom Fighting Evolution, we will go back and play it every once in a while. And then immediately regret the decision. But yeah, that's a that's a terrible game. I think that's objectively a terrible game, actually. <laughs> Super Ghouls and Ghosts. This is, if you go back far enough, uh, one of the first things I ever put up on my other channel, Braver Grave, was a uh, challenge like series called Triumph or Die, right? And it was where I go and I play some of the games that are like my demons that I've never beaten before and try to beat them. And we figure out if I triumph or die, right? Well, Super Ghouls and Ghosts is my all-time demon. Uh, I can barely get past the first stage. I think I, I think I beat the first stage for the first time ever last year. Yeah, I, I it's it's an awful game if you ask me. You know, two hits and you're dead. The really really stupid freaking. Uh, you have to buy a ring for every jump. You know, you commit to that shit immediately. I really can't stand Super Goals and Ghosts, but it never leaves me. And I always go back, and I always say I shouldn't have fucking gone back and tried to beat this, but I always do. It is an awful game, in my opinion. Similarly, Super Adventure Island, which I have beaten that game, but wow, it's bad, in my opinion. The jumping, the you know, damage you take is just disproportional to what you should. The weapon system sucks. I hate that game, but I also kind of like it. Primal Rage. Primal Rage, for those of you who don't know, was a fighting game back in the 90s where you play as dinosaurs. And uh, my dude was Diablo. He was the red T-Rex. That's a t pretty terrible game. Uh, the... The way in which you do special moves in that game is so, like, non-intuitive. Like, it's it's holding buttons, and then, like, it's it's basically the whole game is played in negative edge. If you're a fighting game player, if you know what negative edge is, that's where, uh, let's say you hold down a punch button, and then you do a motion for, a, like, a Hadouken, and then let go of the punch button. On the let go, it throws the fireball. That's negative edge. Um, that's basically how everything is, is done in uh, Primal Rage. Uh, you can get some infinite combos in that game that are just ridiculous. I love it because of the novelty. I freaking love Primal Rage. That game is so cool. I wish they would re-release it, fix the, the freaking, um, like, stupid system on how you do moves and just make it, like, normal motion controls or charge controls and stuff and, and just use that IP, man, because dinosaur fighting game, dude. Come on. <laughs> From The Real K... Okay, here's one. Have the games you've played over the years influenced or defined your writing style, concepts, etc.? Yes. abso freaking lootly Probably the Chrono series, more than anything, obviously. Final Fantasy series inspired some stuff. Uh, Xenogears inspired a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I find inspiration where I find it. And um, when I see certain concepts and certain, like, storytelling mechanics and stuff that resonate with me i want to i want to do something similar writing style no i mean my writing style is just my writing style it was informed by a lot of my favorite writers like uh stephen king hp lovecraft uh dudes like that um yeah that's that's basically how my writing style has uh has evolved over time and something cool about that actually um i'm releasing I think I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times. I'm releasing a uh, collection of short stories really, really soon. And they're short stories that I wrote starting in 2009 to now. So, and I, and outside of going back and doing revisions and like punctuation uh, fixes and things like that, the style, like the overarching writing style of each story it is the same as it was. So it's really cool that you'll be, you can see like, 
uh, you can look at the story I wrote in 2010 and then the story I wrote 2022 this year and see how different the writing styles are between the years because it's honed and changed over time. Regardless of that, yes, video games definitely inspire me. I think I got, mo honestly, I think I got most of my vocabulary from playing video games. Because whenever I saw a word I didn't understand, I would go and, I would go and get on Encarta and look it up. Uh, sorry if I'm showing my age again with my Encarta disc. Um, that's, a, that's another, uh story for another time uh encarta mind maze holy shit i played that constantly and that's how i learned a lot of shit but yeah uh i would just see a word i didn't know i'd go on encarta and i'd look it up and learn the definition and then yeah so a lot of my vocabulary came from from games for sure and uh as far as like homages that i've paid to the games that i love um zero is the only one i can really think of um, the main character's name is Marco, and his wife's name is Fiona. So, there's your nod to Chrono Trigger right there. Uh, Cirque asked, how do you stay motivated in regards to your creativity? Constantly I have ideas that I want to try, but maybe it's just me being 19 and lazy, or it's too much of a hassle to do. The thing about being creative is I've never had a problem coming up with ideas. Uh, if you're talking about actually the actual legwork, uh, rather than like you know, coming up with stuff. Um, the legwork itself, at some point, you just got to sit down and do it. Um, the more you think about doing it, the less time you're spending doing it. That's how I've always been. So whenever I think about it, you know, man, I've got this really good idea for this. I'm like, okay, I got to I gotta put it down on paper, especially writing, right? Um, like, similarly, just recently, I was like, I have an outline for a new short story that I want in the short story collection. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I thought about it all night at work. I came home and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to like put the little, the cliff notes in for what I want this story to be about. So I don't forget the, the key points. So I'm like, okay, I'll just, you know, take 10 minutes. I'll run over there and into the office and I'll type it down. Well, five hours later, <laughs> six in the morning, I, uh, I was done writing the story. <laughs> it was fully fleshed out. Um, and revised and everything, and then I did rewrite a couple of days later. But yeah, um, typically when you sit down to do something, uh, it if you have the creativity within you, it just kind of flows, right? Uh, I think my biggest problem is that I have so many interests, right? So video games, music, writing, uh, all, all of that stuff that has to uh, coexist, right? And a lot of the times I'll, uh, I'll have a problem deciding where to put my focus but once I find that one thing that I need to focus on I hyper focus on it right hyper focus that's why you see videos come up on this channel really fast is because while I'm doing that that's what I want to do because the moment that I get distracted from it it's gonna sit right so doing like the Final Fantasy Tactics pseudo randomizer right now I, I want to not really burn through it. Obviously, I'm going to enjoy my experience of doing it, but it's like a it's a project that once I start it, I, I'm just really happy it's done. Not because I'm done, but because it's complete. You know, I don't like seeing things that are incomplete. Um, same with music. Like if I think of like a riff in my head or something, I got to go over and grab the guitar. And by the time you know I go over and I'm like just playing the riff I've added like 10 more things to the whole freaking riff added a bridge have a chorus riff have a verse it just it just goes right um but yeah I'd say as far as as far as the motivation to like just continuously do it right uh just do it uh just sit down you don't have to force yourself but you know just don't judge yourself too harshly harshly starting out that's another problem that a lot of people have is like when they're looking at the blank page or something when they're writing or they're sitting down with their guitar or something they're they're already judging themselves before anything's even put, been put down you know so um as far as writing goes because that's what i have the most experience in get a sentence out and then just keep going don't go back and change anything while you're writing just let it all come out in your head how because the you know that's that's the raw it's raw coming out of your head this is how i want it to be then 
on the the rewrite you can make your changes and stuff um just do it man don't don't judge yourself put it out there see what people think and most people are going to be pretty cool even if they don't like it they're going to tell you what they don't like and you can go back and improve and from chris reed what was the inspiration for your book and how long did it take to finish it well zero was actually inspired by a book that i started writing when i was much much younger uh that had the main character marco as a side character right um and it was kind of uh ambiguous as to his origins and all that stuff and um i wanted to flesh out his journey to the cursed island uh that was mentioned in the initial book that i was writing and uh it ended up being my first fully written novel um and that series is probably going to span like seven books or more you know um but yeah i i basically sat down and i said i, I want to write about the island and what happened there and stuff and that's that's what zero is right here actually that's the island um so that was my first book that i completed and then the second one oh and uh zero took about nine months uh to write and revise all things told write rewrite and revise uh probably would have taken a lot less time if my cat had not deleted the entire first draft <laughs> by walking on my laptop that was pretty cool we had a good talk about that one but um and then behind the brass curtain much bigger than zero obviously this one um i mean the inspiration to this was just that it's it's was a prequel to zero it's one of three prequels to zero actually there's going to be two more books between this one and zero in the timeline of which you're supposed to read them right so um yeah, and behind the brass curtain, I really like the storytelling mechanic of, like, you know, corrupt elites and, like, clandestine plots and stuff. Sort of mystery, sort of espionage, um, and they're really heavy themes within it, um, and, yeah, it still maintains, like, the fantasy edge to it and everything, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of the books I've written. Holy shit. Um... Just and the fact that a third one is coming out, it's not in this series. The short story collection is not meant to be part of this series, but it does make allusions to it. Um, and yeah, it's it's the greatest feeling ever to be able to hold a book that I wrote. Uh, that being said, I'll go ahead and put again the links in the description below on where to get them if you are interested in reading my books. And I super duper thank you if you are. Anyway, I, it, it's amazing how much of a response I got about my birthday and i'm super excited to celebrate it and you know i think 35 is going to be fine you know 34 was okay um you know it feels like yesterday that i was you know 18 it always does like but you know you trade youth and beauty for wisdom you know so and i'm still holding on to that youth and beauty somehow just maybe a little bit maybe a little but <laughs> it'll go away soon probably but either way Thanks, you guys, for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the comments. And, uh, yeah, man. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.